Sean, did you bring your mascot? Um, I've noticed recently that a very easy way to turn a dollar is kids' books. They're all at it. Everyone's yeah. at it. You know, and uh, I had a successful bash at it with my, um, uh, the tiger who uh, went for a pint. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought, I'm going to get into the kids' book market. It's easy. It's a piece of piss. <laughs> Um, I reckon I can write them quicker than they can read them. <laughs> <laughs> That's how easy it is. So I thought we got Postman Pat, we got Fireman Sam, we have got Bob the Builder. Time for a prison guard. <laughs> <laughs> Swipe, created <laughs> Cyril the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's he's very good. He's good, isn't he? There he is. There's Cyril. There Cyril he is. The and I'm going to read you the story of Cyril the Screw. That's lovely. This is Cyril. He's a prison officer. He likes his job. He drives his prison van from the court to jail. And he's very proud of his prison van. <laughs> Cyril's best friend is a spider called <laughs> Frank. <laughs> Frank goes round the van, listening to the prisoners. Must stop being so naughty. <laughs> Blooming DNA. <laughs> <laughs> As Cyril drives the naughty people to prison, he likes to point out places that might be of interest. Look, lads, at the Red Lion, you can have a pie and a pint for £5.75. <laughs> well, I can. <laughs> <laughs> One day, he saw that Mrs Boggins, the postmistress, was waving at him from the side of the road. Her car had broken down. I'd better pull over and help her, he thought. But it wasn't Mrs Boggins, was it? <laughs> No, she was tied up in the boot. <laughs> it was one of the gang with a wig on. Ooh. As soon as Cyril got out of the van, they punched him so hard he landed upside down in a blackberry bush. <laughs> His little legs wiggling to get free. <laughs> they jumped into the van and drove off with all the prisoners cheering. But Frank, the clever spider, crawled into the back of the satnav and it took them to prison anyway. <laughs> I mean, the merchandise for that alone. I've got, uh, I've got a poem. You've got a poem? What well, fantastic what, what, is, what is that? <laughs> okay, I, I have feelings I can share. That's a stalking and stalker on the back page. <laughs> yeah, it <did. laughs> um, Here is a poem that is simply called Busy Bee. Busy bee, busy bee, why are you so busy? <laughs> busy bee, busy bee, always in a tizzy. <laughs> busy bee, busy bee, thank you for the honey. <laughs> busy bee, busy bee, I owe you more than money. <laughs> busy bee, busy bee, I hope it never ends. <laughs> busy bee, busy bee, you are... My only friend. <laughs> that was about a bee I made friends with on a family holiday in Uruguay. <laughs> I called him a race. He was it's a legend. A, <laughs> the bee just landed on your arm. That's it. Said that Paul Jamo. There he is. It's a there fly. He is. <laughs> it's a bee. You're among friends, Johnny. Come on, do us your poem. Don't be shy. Oh, no, it's going to be that embarrassing. No, now. come on. It's really long, man. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not all of them. It's not all of them. It's a page. OK. I apologise. Johnny Vegas, everyone. In advance. Don't apologise. No. Commit to the Johnny. Right, Johnny. Commit to the Johnny. Oh, OK, all right, all right. It's, it's, it's about last orders. Ask not for whom that bell doth toll, as wordy barmaids' eyes do roll. A landlord with an earnest shout calls time on drinks and ushers out. The dutiful sup up and leave, but he's a last card up his sleeve. With feet like landlocked deep sea diver, shuffles bar woods with a fiver. He begs the last for just one more, and one yourself, just make it right. He promises to drink it quick, yet deep down knows he's feeling sick. Not from stout or bags of scratchings, more from questions booze keeps asking. What happened to the happy me? I think, no, hang on, 
need to pee. <laughs> In the bog, the poets waste, poised to ponder fonder days. Before the time of cheap warm cider, eyes of wonder opening wider. Now they narrow, tired of fun, as fart turns wet and burns the bum. <laughs> Yet Rory's smile pops in his head till urine runs down inside leg. <laughs> and thus the landlord shows him out, the child inside is crying out. I was not meant for such sweet sorrow, but opts instead for see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thou stout, soaked, sig-stained, feckless soul is what for, not whom, that bell did toll. Oh. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Bro, that was heartbreaking. <laughs> well, it was about a friend. <laughs> and um, I've got another poem. This one's called Butterfly. I don't fancy your chances, mate. <laughs> You wouldn't do that during Shakespeare, would you? <laughs> you have got the beard. Oh, come on, mate. This is... <laughs> Just let me do my poem and get through it. Then you can carry on with the game. <laughs> I've got a poem for Susie. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Shut the fuck up! No, where was I? <laughs> <laughs> swoop, swoop, goes the net, but the butterfly it flits, idly avoiding the meshed cage of love. <laughs> swoop, swoop, goes the net, but the butterfly it flits, resting and nesting in the flowers of the adjoining field. <laughs> swoop again! Again! And swoop thrice more. <laughs> But the butterfly, it flits, and my love goes unanswered. <laughs> why, butterfly, why? Why must you flit? <laughs> but the butterfly does not answer, for it has no mouth. <laughs> OK, John, have you got a mask up? Uh, yes, well, it's a chance to plug my latest project. Um, I've written an erotic novel <laughs> based on my own life. Oh, um, God. It's called Deep Clean. <laughs> Do you want to hear some? I, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of erotic fiction. All down the street, they could hear the screaming coming from the bathroom. Harder, harder, she cried. You'll never shift that lime scale like that. <laughs> In the dimly lit bathroom, he stood naked, except for his clothes. <laughs> Holding in his hand his pulsating, wet toothbrush. <laughs> All clean, he declared, scuttling into the bedroom. That smells nice, she purred as he emptied the bottle into his hands and began massaging the soft flesh of her shoulders. Good, he said, and it's also killing 99.9% <laughs> <laughs> of all the bacteria on your back. <laughs> Good old Carex. You haven't, you haven't written this, you've remembered it, haven't you? <laughs> when he'd finished, he stripped off slowly, making two neat piles of light and darks. <laughs> Are you going to tie me up, she asked. No, he laughed sarcastically. I'm going to let you wander around the house willy-nilly while I'm trying to do the hoovering. <laughs> Available in uh, my garage. So reworked an old classic, and it is the tiger who came for a pint. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely story. It mixes up two of my favourite things, which is uh, tigers and alcohol. <laughs> I'll read the story to you now. I've got to use Susie's pen cam. The tiger who came for a pint. Now, there was once a tiger who fancied a pint. Not carling, of course. That was too weak and too gassy. <laughs> he wanted a pint that packs a punch like Stella or Cronenberg. <laughs> <There he is. laughs> the tiger was 
was thirsty <laughs> and needed something to wash down the zookeeper he'd just eaten. <laughs> he liked the atmosphere of Weatherspoons. Plus, plus, he was barred from the King's Head for mauling the darts team. <laughs> Tiger drank his pint quietly beside the quiz machine. Soon, what with the beer, fags and flame-grilled McCoys, <laughs> he'd spent all his money. <laughs> but he didn't half have a thirst on. <laughs> so, when George went to the cellar to flush out the Strongbow line, <laughs> the Tiger drank all the beer from all the kegs and all the rum they were saving for Caribbean night. <laughs> Then he ate the meat raffle. <laughs> a very naughty tiger. <laughs> then he went to toilet on the bar. <laughs> this is going to sell millions. <laughs> We're going to have to call you a mini cab home, tiger, said George, the deputy manager, <laughs> bursting from the cellar. Where do you want taking? To the zoo, you silly bollocks. <laughs> So George, the deputy manager, called the tiger a cab. <laughs> it took a while to get one because the first two drivers they sent said, Are you mental? <laughs> Finally, Pavel from Station Cars agreed to do <laughs> The journey went smoothly and eventually, after a lot of questioning, the tiger said, Look, for the last time, it's not a onesie. <laughs> Weatherspoon's deputy manager, George, never saw the tiger or Pavel, the station's car's driver, ever again. Mm. <laughs> yeah. A witch frigged herself off with her broom handle. Her cat watched on, tired of it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, pu I'm published. Published poet.